the question in this lecture requires the knowledge of three different topics the first one is laplace transform the second one is inverse laplace transform and the third one is roc and stability of causal and anti causal lti systems so we will read the question first and then we will solve it according to the question the differential equation of an lti system is given below you can see the differential equation defining the LTI system and we are required to determine HT which is the impulse response of the LTI system in each of the following cases. There are three cases. In case number one we need to find HT when the system is stable. In case number two we are required to find HT when the system is causal. And in the final case, we are required to find HT when the system is neither causal nor stable. So this question is an important question because it requires knowledge of so many different topics. And therefore, we are solving it after discussing all the related topics. And we will start by understanding what is given in the question and what we are actually trying to find out in the question one LTI system is defined using this differential equation. The input to this LTI system is xt and the output of this LTI system is yt. And we need to find out the impulse response ht of this LTI system. And we know if we take the Laplace transform of impulse response ht, we will get the transfer function hs. This is after taking the Laplace transform of HT and if we have the transfer function HS and we take the inverse Laplace transform, we will get HT. So in question, we are required to determine HT. Therefore, we will focus on calculation of HS because once we have HS, we can take inverse Laplace transform to get HT. But HS is not the complete information required to calculate HT. We need the region of convergence as well. Using the region of convergence and HS, we can find out the true HT. And in the previous lecture, we saw how to calculate the transfer function HS using the given differential equation. So we will follow the same process to calculate HS in this case as well. And to calculate the region of convergence, we will use our knowledge of ROC and the stability of causal and anti-causal LTI systems. So now we have the clear understanding of what steps we need to follow in order to find out the impulse response HT of the given LTI system. So let's begin with the first step in which we will calculate the transfer function HS and to calculate the transfer function we will use the given differential equation. The given differential equation is d square yt over dt square. This is the first term minus d yt over dt minus 2 yt is equal to xt. So this is the differential equation and now we will take the Laplace transform of this equation and we know the Laplace transform of 2 times derivative of yt is equal to s square multiplied to the Laplace transform of yt and let's say the Laplace transform of yt is ys. So we have s square multiplied to ys as the Laplace transform of this term. In the same way, we will have s multiplied to ys as the Laplace transform of dyt over dt minus 2ys as the Laplace transform of 2yt. And let's say the Laplace transform of input xt is equal to xs. Now from here, we can easily find out ys over xs. If we take ys common in the left hand side, we will have s square minus s minus 2 inside the bracket and on the right hand side we will have xs. 
Now I will divide both the sides by x s multiplied to s square minus s minus 2. This will give us y s over x s on the left hand side and this is equal to the transfer function h s and this is equal to 1 over s square minus s minus 2. Factorizing the denominator we can write h s is equal to 1 over s minus 2 multiplied to s plus 1. Now we will write this Laplace transform as the combination of standard Laplace transforms using the partial fractions. So using the partial fractions we can write 1 over s minus 2 multiplied to s plus 1 equal to a over s minus 2 plus b over s plus 1. Now when you solve for a and b you will find a is equal to 1 over 3. You will get a equal to 1 over 3 and you will get b equal to minus 1 over 3. This means the transfer function hs can be written as 1 over 3 divided by s minus 2 minus 1 over 3 divided by s plus 1 and from here we can find out the corresponding time domain signal and we know the corresponding time domain signal of hs is the impulse response ht so impulse response ht is equal to 1 over 3 this 1 over 3 and 1 over s minus 2 will have the corresponding time domain signal equal to e power 2t multiplied to ut. After this we have minus 1 over 3 and the corresponding time domain signal of 1 over s plus 1 is equal to e power minus t multiplied to ut. So this is the answer but we are having three different cases and ht will change according to the cases we are having here. In this case, this signal is right sided signal and this signal is also right sided signal. But there will be some changes in the orientation of the two signals depending on whether the system is stable, causal or neither causal nor stable. Now we will understand what will be the changes and how to find out the changes. For this we will move on to the next part of this lecture in which we will find out the region of convergence in the three different cases and using the region of convergence we will modify our impulse response. So we will first talk about the case number one. In case number one the system is stable. This means the j omega axis is included in the region of convergence and if you look at the transfer function you will find there are two poles s equal to plus 2 and s equal to minus 1. So they are the two poles and we will quickly plot them in the s plane. y axis is the j omega axis, x axis is the sigma axis and the plane we are having here is the s plane. So in S plane, the first pole is located at plus 2 and the second pole is located at minus 1. And according to the property of a stable LTI system, J omega axis must be included in the region of convergence. This means in our region of convergence, this axis must be included. And we also know that none of the poles of the system is included in the region of convergence. This means minus 1 and 2 will not be included in the ROC. This makes our ROC as a strip. This is how the ROC of the system will look. Minus 1 and 2 are not included in the ROC but J omega axis is included. This makes system as stable. And looking at the ROC, it is clear that sigma, sigma is greater than minus 1 
but it is less than 2. So this is the region of convergence and from here we can say that sigma is greater than minus 1 and from here we can say that sigma is less than 2. And if you remember the shortcut I gave you to write down the region of convergence, you will find out whenever there is greater than sign, this means the signal is right sided signal. Whenever there is greater than sign between sigma and the real part of the coefficient of t in the exponential, you can see minus 1 is the real part of the coefficient of t in the exponential, then the signal is right sided signal. This means the signal we are having here is the right sided signal and whenever we have less than sign between sigma and the real part of the coefficient of t in the exponential, the signal is left sided signal. So you can see that this signal is right sided signal in HT. So this part is correct but you can see that this signal is also right sided signal but according to ROC the signal should be left sided. So we need to make correction in this signal to have the correct HT when the system is stable. So correct HT will be 1 over 3 multiplied to e power 2t. To make this signal left sided signal we need to have u minus t in place of ut. So we have u minus t and this part will remain as it is. So we have minus 1 over 3 e power minus t multiplied to ut. But still there is one mistake. When you multiplied u minus t to the exponential, it is important to multiply minus sign as well. Because we know the Laplace transform of u minus t is equal to 1 over s with negative sign. So when you take the Laplace transform of this time domain signal, this minus sign and this minus sign will become plus and therefore we will have this result. So our transfer function will not change. So I hope you understand why we have taken negative sign when we multiplied by u minus t. So this is the answer of the first case. Now we will move on to the second case and in the second case, it is given that system is causal and we know for causal LTI systems the region of convergence is right side to the right most pole and if you look at the poles you will find 2 is the right most pole. So the region of convergence in the second case will be like this right side to the rightmost pole and it is clear that sigma is greater than 2. So region of convergence in the second case is sigma greater than 2 and this implies sigma is also greater than minus 1 and we know when there is greater than sign between sigma and the real part of the coefficient of t the signal is going to be right sided signal. In this case also there is greater than sign therefore the signal will be right sided signal and we have written HT for right sided signals here therefore HT is going to be same as this signal here HT is equal to 1 over 3 multiplied to e power 2t multiplied to ut minus 1 over 3 e power minus t multiplied to ut. So this is the answer in the second case. Now the third case in which the signal is neither causal nor stable is the homework for you. So try to find out the correct impulse response for the third case. Use the same method I have used in the first and second cases and you will have the correct answer. And if you have followed all the lectures, all the previous lectures in a good way by revising them properly then you will be able to solve it in no time. So this is all for this lecture. Once you have your answer of the homework problem, don't forget to post it in comment section.